A very special edition in our series, Women Mean Business. And this one took me to NASA and back. Well, November, next November, history will be made when the Artemis II mission sends the first black astronaut and the first woman astronaut on a lunar mission. That woman is Christina Cook, and she's playing a pivotal role in NASA's push to get back to the moon. I grew up in a small town in North Carolina. I didn't even see another engineer, much less an astronaut. And at that time, also probably not really seeing women as astronauts. Yeah, definitely not. Christina Cook is used to being the only woman in the room. And come next year, she'll be the only woman who's headed to the moon when she embarks on the Artemis II mission planned for November 2024. But that first is just the latest on a long list, going back to when she was named an astronaut a decade ago. A phone call she remembers well. And I actually started out by telling them, hey, it's okay, I had a great time interviewing. Thanks for considering me. And they actually had to interrupt me and say, actually, we're calling to tell you we want you to join our team to come to Houston. Since that day, she set records, like the longest single space flight by a woman with a total of 328 days in space and participating in the first all-female spacewalk. What was that moment like, going out with all women? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Hopefully that got people thinking about where we're at. We weren't just out there for a participation ribbon. We, we wanted to actually be excellent spacewalkers. This isn't very well known, but the coolest thing about that spacewalk was it was unplanned. It was the only spacewalk I did that was not planned prior. I never trained for it, she never trained for it. We actually went out to fix something that had broken. So we designed the entire spacewalk in one week with the teams on the ground. And normally a spacewalk is developed for years. Along the way, she's faced obstacles unique to women in the male dominated field. The fleet of suits is actually built for a bigger bodied astronaut. So I go out and do spacewalks in a suit that's two sizes too big for me. There actually are time factors that they add in for how much longer tasks will take in someone who's doing a spacewalk in a suit that's too big for them. Are there things about your job that you think are changing and will change and will continue to get better as more women do this? Definitely. In fact, the suit is a perfect example because the next suits that they're making for the moon surface operations are actually going to, by design, fit a very wide range of people. Among your many accomplishments, adding another one, the first woman on a lunar mission. What was it like to get that news? It was great news. Funny story, we were actually all late. No one was on time to this meeting. We had a meeting put on our calendars under a different pretense, so none of us had any idea how important this meeting was going to be. And we were asked, how would you like to fly on Artemis II? Uh, when, you know, after walking in and seeing the people in the room, I knew that it wasn't a meeting I should have been late to. <laughs> but um, after kind of regaining my composure, you know, it took me a second to take it in. I said it would be an honor. and and we'll try not to disappoint you in the future by being late. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be on time and they'll be uber prepared. Cook will be a mission specialist on the 10 day Artemis II mission that will send four astronauts around the moon on the Orion spacecraft. The team is currently training on a simulator Cook is seeing for the first time with us. This is our sim and it's just getting ramped up. And this is the first time the seats have been installed and we have software up and the displays are, are on. When we're on that far side of the moon is when we will probably be executing something like this. There we go. Oh, so there, finally, the okay. moon. Yep, the moon is there. This is the dream come true of any astronaut. It's still exciting every single day that we get to come and do training in this mock-up. The crew is taking courses in this exact replica of Orion. This is my seat, oh, so you're no. going to be sitting in my seat. Okay, that's sorry. that's great. I claim this spot up here, that's going to be my sleep spot. We'll be laying on our backs, facing okay. up, and when we start to actually accelerate, we'll have that feeling of acceleration like this way, like kind of being pushed back in your chair. When you think about okay. that moment, nerves? Are you scared? <laughs> Are you excited? What's that particular moment feel like? The moment that you actually lift off. Honestly, if I could assign one word to it, it would be the word fulfillment because wow. you finally realize you are fulfilling the mission that you came here to do. Okay, how cool is she? Christina says that she sees one of her responsibilities on this mission as taking the dreams, hopes, and goals of everyone, all of us with her, because she sees this as everyone's journey. I also, of course, asked her what her advice for others who want to follow in her footsteps would be, as we always do on Women Mean Business. She says that she wants you to do what scares you. She said if you go towards that and not away from those things that might feel sort of out of your reach, that is where the magic happens.
And look at that. It's yeah. taken her all the way to the moon. She knows what she's talking about. Ugh, and I she love was so that. fantastic, so much fun, and just the sharpest, most incredible woman who was so willing to share so much with me. It was the best day. She seems so down to earth, ironically, because she's yeah. up in space. Love that. Our That's heart. good. Yeah, thank all you. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.